Peoria City Council meeting will now come to order. Please rise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Vice Mayor Edwards. Thank you. The clerk will please call the roll. Mayor Carlett? Here. Vice Mayor Edwards? Here. Councilmember Toma? Here. Councilmember Patena? Here. Councilmember Finn? Here. Councilmember Hunt? Here. Councilmember Leone? Here. Council Liaison Mullane? Here. Council Liaison Held? Here. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Peoria City Council meeting of February 3rd, 2015. This is the final call to submit speaker request forms. If anyone would like to address an issue that is on the agenda or if you would like to speak regarding non-agenda items, uh, we have speaker request forms available in the lobby or from the clerk. If you give us a little bit of information, you will be recognized at the appropriate time. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. These are items listed on the agenda with a C. They are considered routine by the city council or have been previously addressed by the council. They will be passed by one motion unless a member of the council requests that an item be removed from the consent agenda. Are there any items to be removed from consent? Yes, I would like to request the removal of 5C and 8C. Okay, 5C and 8C will be heard in the regular agenda. Do we have a motion on the consent agenda with the exception of five and eight C? So moved. Second. Okay, so there was a motion by Council Member Patena and second by Council Member Hunt. Any discussion? If not, clerk will record the vote. It is unanimous. So we will move forward then with item 5C. And uh, Rachel Aha uh, from the city manager's office will uh, introduce this item. Um, Rachel, um, what I wanted, I'm not finding my paper here. Uh, what I was wanting, I'm not in any way opposed to this. This is uh, for information on your part because when I read the explanation, I found it a little bit confusing as to yes means no and no means yes, and it was a little bit convoluted. And while I do understand it now and support it, I wonder if you would just briefly explain it for the listening public and those here to whom it may be interesting. Yes, thank you, Mayor, Councilmember Hunt. Uh, in May, the city of May of 2013, the city of Peoria Council approved a resolution that indicated support for the West Valley Resort and Casino, and opposed any federal legislation at that time. And now we have a, have a new council and mayor, and uh, the Tohono O'odham's Nation land has been taken into trust and is considered a reservation now. And. Uh, on January 13th of this year, members of Congress introduced federal legislation that would attempt to change the existing law in order to prevent this project from going forward. And so tonight you have before you a resolution that uh, is restating the city of Peoria's uh, support for the West Valley Resort and Casino and uh, opposition of any federal legislation that would serve to block this project from going forward. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion for item 5C? I move that we support um, the 5C. Okay. I'll second. Okay, so there is a motion from Council Member Hunt and a second from Vice Mayor Edwards. Uh, please vote. The clerk will record your vote. It passes six to one with Councilmember Toma dissenting. OK, 
Okay, now we're going to move on to item 8C. Bob Goodhue from our uh, Development Services Department will uh, make a brief presentation on this item. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bob. I, again, I, I want you to know that I think I support this. I think it's rather routine, but this is in my district, Acacia District, and I knew nothing about it, and I hesitate to vote on something that I have not seen background on. So you do have this vicinity map up. If you'll go ahead and explain, and I, I think uh, for everyone's uh, interest, you might explain what a plat map, what is it that they're applying for? Well, the, the Mayor, um, Council Member Hunt, what they're applying for is a replat of an existing commercial lot um, that was platted a number of years ago. And so this is, they're splitting the lot into two individual lots. And for them to sell the one lot off to a new owner, they have to plat it. And so that's uh, what they're doing right now. And um, if you look at lot one is where a new uh, Aaron's Furniture Store is gonna be located, a 7,000 square foot retail furniture store on lot one. So the uh, proponents are requesting approval of the, uh, of the replat of uh, the existing lot into two lots. Could you, go back to the Could you go back to the preceding one? Again, just for everybody's clarification, this site is immediately adjacent to and south of our fire station one, is that correct? Mayor, uh, Council Member Hunt, y yes it is. It's uh, south of the fire station, uh, directly across the street from the existing Walmart store on the Cotton Crossing Road. And so all we're approving tonight is the purchase of, or the, their plat plan. It doesn't, their build out and so on is going to be completely separate and at another time, is that correct? They've already applied for permits. Um, their uh, engineering civil permits have, uh, or haven't been pulled, but they've uh, done all the plan reviews and they're waiting for issuance and they've already applied for building permits for the store and it's still under review at this time. And might point out this is a, a vacant lot at this time, so it will be a build from the ground up. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay, are there any more questions? No? Seeing none, do I have a motion? So move. Second. Okay, so there is a motion from Council Member Hunt and a second from Council Member Finn on 8C, Final Plat, Aaron's Furniture, Cotton Crossing, and Peoria Avenue. If you'll please vote. Clerk will record your vote. It is unanimous. All right, now we are gonna move on to the regular agenda, new business. The next item on the agenda is a public hearing, liquor license, Sprouts Farmer's Market, number 31, located at 10134 West Happy Valley Road. Brent Mattingly, our Chief Financial Officer, will make a brief presentation on this item. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Mayor and Council properties were posted in accordance with Arizona statutes. All reviewing departments recommend approval. All fees were paid and no comments were received from the public. Thank you. Council, are there any questions for Mr. Mattingly? Okay, I declare this public hearing open. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to address this issue? Okay, seeing none, I declare this public hearing closed. Is there a motion on item 10R? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, a motion by Council Member Toma and a second by Council Member Patena. Please vote, and the clerk will record your vote. It is unanimous. Thank you. Next item. Uh, is item 11R, and we are at this time going to take a presentation for item 11R and item 13R together. So we will have these presentations together, uh, beginning with agenda item 13R. 
Great. Thank you, Mayor Carla, for combining these two items because they are related. Um, our Fire Chief, Bobby Reese, will make the presentation on these. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council. Thank you for having us here. The item we have before you is a request for an ordinance amendment uh, regarding a subscription fee for fire and medical services to the Pinnacle Peak County Island. We've had several uh, study sessions and discussions during general meetings on, on this subject. And on during the November 25th, 2014 study session, the City Council provided direction to staff to offer a subscription for city fire and emergency services to this area, uh, to the area of residents of the Pinnacle Peak area. Since that time, a cross-functional team has been working to develop the systems and processes to administer the subscription um, effort. And the team came up with a flat subscription rate of $450 based on the assessed value of the average Peoria home. Uh, with that, uh, I'll take any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions for Chief Reese? Okay, so then we will move on to uh, the presentation for item 11R. Yes, uh, 13R is, so we get it up here, is a request for a budget amendment from the general fund reserves for a total of $3,200, uh, 22,500 $22, is for marketing and promotions and outreach and short-term consultant fees. These are mailers and door hangers uh, that uh, are going out to this county island to apprise them that we're uh, reaching out with a subscription service to them. And uh, there's a typo there. It's $9,500 for on-site residential education by the Peoria, Peoria Medical uh, Department for staff to go door-to-door -door and educate the uh, residents of our new service and our new subscription service. This is uh, a sign, and I think we have a, a, uh, a true example of the real sign me, that we will ask some of the champions in the area to have on their front yard, as you can see there, and uh, has our um, website and our phone number on there for further information. And with that, I'll take any questions. Council, any questions? Uh, Mr. Tillman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's not really a question, it's more of a statement. I just wanna commend you, um, Chief, for, for the work you've done on this. I know it's a complicated situation, and uh, I think uh, this is a much better option for the residents of the county, and uh, it's a much better option for the city of Peoria. So, good work. Thank you. Council Member Patena. Chief, I'd like to go back to the subscription fee, if I may. Is uh, I thought I read someplace where Sun City West Fire is also going door to door and selling subscription fees. Is that a true statement? They are selling annexations door to from parcel to parcel uh, for uh, actual annexations into Sun City West and their subscription rates or their annexation rates are best based on assessed value, secondary assessed value on the home. So they're relatively, should be higher than what we're asking for in a flat fee. Our rationale for the flat fee is that uh, if you have a heart attack, it, we're sending them the same amount of resources, doesn't matter if uh, what size your home is or what the value of your home is. Okay, thank you. Council Member Finn. I'm sorry, it'll bother me all night, all night long if I don't ask the question. <laughs> so we have the potential of some people doing the annexation and some people signing up for uh, Peoria service. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? 
um, Mayor and, and uh, Councilperson Finn, that, that's uh, correct is that they were selling the subscriptions. Sun City West has been selling annexations. This is our uh, extended way, which we've been dealing this, with this issue for about a year and a half, close to two years now, of the way to, to uh, uh, get Sun City West out of our uh, planning area, hardened planning area. Okay, I understand, thank you. Okay. This is a public hearing and I declare this public hearing open. I do have one request to speak. Mr. Dwayne Zimer, to please come up to the podium and um, give us your name and address, please. I'm Dwayne Zimer, and uh, my address is 22040 North 86th Avenue, Peoria. That's uh, North Peoria, just north of Deer Valley Road in Peoria. I'm a, it's a county island. Uh, my north property line is a, a city of Peoria property line, but I'm still in the county. Anyway, I'm also a retired city of Phoenix fire captain, and my uh, nephew is a city of Peoria fire chief, and my great nephews are city of Peoria firefighters and paramedics and so on, so forth. Anyway, I know the difference between the quality of service between, say, Sun City West, rural metro, and municipal organizations like City of Peoria, City of Phoenix, City of Glendale, so on and so forth. I just want to thank all of you to make, for making this available to the County Island residents to, to even consider you know, to offering this to us because it's, it'll be a great relief to my mind knowing the service that we're going to be getting if this does go through. And I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for your comments. This is a public meeting. Is there anyone else who would like to address this issue? Okay, seeing none, I declare this public hearing closed. Is there a motion on item 11R? We'll begin with 11R. Second? Second. Okay, that's a motion by Vice Mayor Edwards and a second by Council Member Finn. Please vote and the clerk will record your vote. unanimous thank you now we move on to item 13 R is there a motion on item 13 R second okay so we have a motion by vice mayor Edwards and a second by council member Toma please vote and the clerk will record your vote it is unanimous thank you now we will get back in order here and go on to item number 12, R. Intergovernmental Agreement Amendment, City of Phoenix, Solid Waste recycle, Recyclable Materials Processing. And uh, this item will be presented by Bill Mattingly, our Public Works and Utilities Director, and um, Stuart Kent, our uh, Deputy Public Works and Utilities Director. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'm glad you stumbled on that word and not I. <laughs> it's a tough one. This is an item uh, to renew an agreement that we have with the City of Phoenix for processing recyclable materials. Uh, since we started in the recycling business back in 2007, the City of Phoenix has been our partner uh, from the very beginning and it's been a very valuable relationship. The City of Peoria currently has three agreements for landfill and recyclable materials. One is an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Phoenix, which we're talking about right now, for recycled materials only. Another is an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Glendale for both landfill services and for recyclable services, which was just executed uh, back in August of this, of this uh, last year. And then we have a contract with Waste Management Company also for landfill materials and for recyclable materials. And why did we do this? Because of our geography and the location of these landfills and these recycling facilities, material recovery facilities, in, in the jargon of the industry, MRFs, it is very beneficial for us for our routing and, and, and delivery of our service to use all of these different entities uh, to the best of our advantage. 
They provide us flexibility in our routing and they help us to maximize the efficiency of our service delivery. So the agreement with the City of Phoenix is a payment for recyclable material, recycled, I stumbled on it, recycled material <laughs> based on the value of the material. The payments will range between $30 and $35 a ton, and that's based on the commodity rate. In other words, the things that get recycled, whether it's paper, whether it's cardboard, whether it's aluminum, or whether it's glass, they all have a value in the marketplace, and that changes from time to time. And there's an index in this contract which allows us to determine whether we're going to get paid a flat rate of $30 per ton that we deliver or $35 a, a ton. So, Again, what this will do, this is a continuous relationship that we've had with the City of Phoenix. We'll continue to work with them as well as with the City of Glendale and with Waste Management. It is the staff's recommendation that the Mayor and Council approve this intergovernmental agreement with the City of Phoenix for recyclable surfaces. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Mattingly? Seeing none, is there a motion? Okay, motion by Councilmember Patena and second by Councilmember Hunt. Please vote. Clerk will record your vote. <coughs> it is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Okay, next item on the agenda is 14R, deed restriction, old fire station, 83rd Avenue and Washington Street. Mr. Spencer? Um, yes, Deputy City Manager Susan DeLuden will make the uh, staff report on this item. Thank you, Mr. Swenson, and good evening, Mary Carlette and members of the Peoria City Council. Um, tonight, staff is in front of you recommending a deed restriction uh, be placed on one of our city buildings, uh, the property known as Fire Station Number 1. Um, as we've had a lot of inquiry and use of that building, uh, either for uh, free, for lease, for purchase, a variety of different proposals have come to the city in the past couple years. We see that before we take any actions, we should maintain the historical character of the exterior improvements to that building. Why? Well, it was constructed in 1920, so it's one of the first buildings that placed us as a, as a town, a municipality. It has a long history of uses, and it has been used as a warehouse, it's been used as a theater, a fire station, a storage um, for theater works, and a variety of other training uh, opportunities, too, uh, for the fire. So. Uh, there's no one particular use that defines this building. As though our first municipal fire station, we feel it did play an important role in our history as a city and as a municipality. And the city being the property owner, we actually own this building, we can choose to protect its historic character whereas we can't always do that with private uh, buildings. It's not on the Peoria list of historic places. It's not on a register. It's um, just something where we think the character of the building and as it pertains to that block ought to be retained. Um, we've had uh, a lot of work done in the 1990s, mid-90s, and then again in the mid-2000s on the value, the various historic values. In fact, uh, we received a grant uh, from Peoria uh, branch here of the SHPO to do uh, a review of our historic places in downtown and kind of look at all the buildings so that we'll have a basis for understanding even more clearly what character does need to be preserved and one, what does not have value. Our intent with the deed instruction is to ensure regardless of what future use is determined, the exterior, the outside of the old fire station will be done in a manner that preserves our past. And staff in the city would conduct a due diligence uh, to any improvements, and improvements could actually enhance the exterior of that building, I, I would go so far as to say. They very well could, so as long as they're historic in nature. 
So prior to making any improvements in the uh, exterior of the building of the fire station one property, the drawings, the plans, specifications shall be submitted to the city for a determination that the improvements would not alter the historic character of the building. So in summary, by uh, approving this action tonight, the initial um, real estate transaction that would go with any kind of option to purchase would uh, be placed on this property first. That would be the first legal um, action. It would need to be recorded before the execution of any lease, and um, including an option, and staff recommends approval. Steve Kemp has worked on the legal documents, and I've worked on um, the approach, and we feel comfortable with this action, but we're here to answer any questions you may have. With that, we recommend approval. Thank you. Council Member Hunt? Well, I'm just really, really pleased to see this coming okay. down the turnpike here. Um, this is so necessary. That would be a building, and, and I think you're correct in saying that probably for um, even recent history, people most identify that building as Fire Station 1. And uh, so that probably in the long run is going to be what we decide that it should be, that character should be retained. But most importantly, it, it is crucial that we put this kind of hold on the land or on the building so that someone cannot come in and just scrape the land and, and build something different there. This is crucial to our historic preservation, and I just applaud the planners and the city for taking this step, and I absolutely approve this. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would, I would also like to echo that. It's, it's really a point of pride to be able to vote on this this evening, to say that we care enough about the um, history of our great city to preserve uh, its past, and um, I think that speaks a lot for who we're going to be in the future. So thank you for bringing this forward. Thank Are there you. any other comments? Okay, then is there a motion on item 14R? Yes, I will move to accept 14R. Second. Okay, that is um, a motion by Council Member Hunt and a second by Council Member Finn. Please vote. It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is call to the public for non agenda items. Uh, if you wish to address the City Council, please complete a speaker request form and return it to the City Clerk. I have none of those forms at this moment, so with that, we're gonna move on to reports from the city manager. Thank you, Mayor Carlett. Um, just a couple of items under my report. First, you have the uh, standard um, council subcommittee update, probably the last uh, council subcommittee update, given the changes that uh, the council uh, agreed to make in that process uh, that'll be on your agenda next week, or next meeting. Uh, the next item is, um, uh, a little bit of information about the upcoming Greek Fest. Uh, as you know, the city of Peoria uh, supports the uh, Greek Fest that is held each year at the Greek Orthodox Church located at 7950 West Pinnacle Peak Road. Uh, the festival runs uh, Friday, February 6th from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Saturday, February 7th, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, February 8th from noon uh, to 8 p.m. and I know uh, that um, youth liaison uh, Michael Helt is going to speak to this under his report as well so I won't uh, steal his thunder with any more on uh, the Greek Fest. Uh, the next item uh, I have is um, actually at your place and this is uh, from our wellness committee. This is a, a uh, water bottle and a sling uh, and the wellness committee wants to remind um, citizens and the city council to uh, stay hydrated uh, so we have also the uh, little power pack here that uh, if you become dehydrated, uh, it's got a lot of electrolytes in it. You put that in with the water and uh, you will feel a lot better quickly, I'm sure. Um, the next uh, item uh, that I wanted to mention is um, some update from the uh, past weekend uh, activities of the 
uh, Super Bowl. Of course, uh, Peoria supported the Super Bowl in a whole variety of different ways. Um, and uh, one of the unique things that we had that the council supported was what we called our fish bowl. Uh, and this was a fishing derby that we had at Pioneer Park, and it was a huge success, and John Sefton is going to show us some pictures of that. Well, thank you, Carl, and good evening, Mayor and Council. And it is, it's off, off, so awfully wonderful how we in Peoria get to get out and play. And while the world's eyes were on us in Arizona, uh, Peoria definitely got out and had some fun through, through your direction and how we create some unique experiences. And of course, the fishbowl, and we'll actually got a little video. I'll draw your attention to your screens. I'm going to talk over this here. Uh, but the fishbowl was absolutely amazing. This was held on. Uh, Saturday, uh, just before the Super Bowl, 316 participants registered to come out and fish. So of course that means about 450 folks were actually standing around and observing all the fun that was going on here. That was Mark. Uh, Mark actually caught the first of the fish and he won a four or $500 shopping spree to Cabela's. We had some phenomenal friends, the reptiles from Radical Reptile Fun, World Wildlife Zoo brought out Elvis, that's the bird you see there. Uh, the Elvis is an Abyssinian ground hornbill and has a knack for maybe not so much picking the winners of uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, they did actually you know, have both the uh, tortoises and the uh, horned bill there had it right. Uh, they had no control over the coaching decisions uh, for which play was, was done. Uh, and then our uh, next event, uh, while everybody was maybe sleeping in to rest up for the Super Bowl, go ahead and roll that. On Super Bowl Sunday, our Peoria residents got out for even more fun. We even had some international guests show up, uh, some folks from Sweden and Germany uh, who were in town, learned of our event, and came to participate in the Super Day 10K. 326 registered runners came out for the foggiest run ever. Take a look at these faces. Hang tight, hang tight, hang tight. We had just about the whole span of anybody that could run uh, that came out in, in that group of 326. I want to give a special shout out to Bo Larson and his whole communications team. While these events were great for the participants and the uh, families that came out to play, uh, we gained a significant amount of city recognition. We had uh, locally, obviously, our uh, friends at the Peoria Times as well as Peoria Today uh, covered our events and with, with enthusiasm and some commentary. We had reporters send out uh, with camera from ESPN. The uniqueness of these events attracted those reporters, so we actually had assignments from ESPN. And we even had a reporter from Qatar. So internationally, our, our choice in making unique and fun events is paying off for Peoria big time. Thank you. Thank you, John, and uh, that's it for my report. Great, thank you. Okay, we're gonna move on to reports from City Council, starting with Youth Council Liaison Hilt. Hello. Um, well, as uh, Carl got to about the Peoria Greek Fest, that's where I'm hosting my Eagle Scout project. Um, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, from Friday, 5 to 10 p.m., Saturdays 11 to 10 p.m., and Sundays 12 to 8 p.m. Um, if you want to come check out my the, my Eagle Scout project, I have some um, free passes to get in and check it out. So if you're interested, come let me know and you can have a ticket. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Leone. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just got a couple of things that I want to talk about. Uh, I didn't, I didn't write too much down about them. Just the events that I attended, and uh, they were all great events. And if anybody knows me, I just love events, and I think uh, we should have more events. Uh, five years from now, when the Super Bowl comes, I think that we should have a lot of events for the Super Bowl. Anyway, uh, I was invited to the Cotton Bowl School about the future of the school made a model of, the kids made a model of the new school that, that, that they would like to see. And those models were great, the kids did a great job. And uh, if they build those schools the way the kids uh, did the model, 
uh, it's going to look like something out of space. I, I couldn't see one window in those schools, but it's great, and the kids are going to learn, and I think that in the near future, these kids are going to be uh, building these schools and at least building models. Just want to say on uh, February 13th, they had a celebration of the artists of the City Hall Gallery, historical avi aviation, and it's, it's always great. They have the artists there, and they always have a, a great people. A lot of people come. It was just crowded, and it's just great to have these events at City Hall, and people come down and look around, and they see City Hall if they've never been there. So I think all these uh, celebrations that we have for the artists' uh, gallery is, is great. If, if you've never been down there, it's a city hall. It's, when they go in the front door, you go to the left, and you'll see it. It's just great. And leave a donation. Also, I went to Triology Open House, and uh, the homes are great. It was owned by Cher. And uh, the homes are great, and uh, there's a lot of homes there, a lot of people there. We had a hard time getting in there because Farmer's Market was there at, in Triology, and uh, there were no parking spaces, but we finally got one, and it's, those homes were just looking great, and I'm glad I went to that event. And also, Maxwell House Technology, they had a tour of it. It was the second time I've been there since they built on the second tour, and it's just great. If you ever been to uh, Maxwell House Technology, uh, maybe you can go down there and, and see if they give you a tour. It's just great. They, they did a great job. Uh, and the fiesta, the fish bowl at Pioneer Park, like uh, John said, excuse me, like John says, <coughs> like John said and, and Carl, it was just great. There was over 300 people. I know I, I met a lot of people that I knew, uh, a lot of people from out of the city, and they asked me if I caught any fishes, and I tell them, no, I'm not a fisherman. I went fishing twice back in Boston and never again. Uh, I sit there all day and catch a jellyfish, or sit there all day and catch a cob, and that's, that's not my bag. So, but if you're a fisherman, that's great. Go down there and fish, because it, it, it it's, it's just great for the city of Peoria. As far as on 91st Avenue, <clears throat> they had a Super Bowl Sunday, they call it, and uh, they had games for the kids and the parents, and uh, they had the, uh, kids throwing a football through a hole for like a quarterback, and then they had kids kicking field goals, and I asked this kid how old he was. He says eight, and he kicked a field goal. I said, I couldn't even lift my leg that high. But they, were, they, all, they all had a lot of fun. The parents had a lot of fun also. So I think it was just great. I just want to mention that at the Super Bowl, security and the police department and Peoria was there. They did a great job for protecting our constituents and the people at the Super Bowl. That place was packed. And it's just great that they did a good job and keeping everybody safe. And, and that's the main thing is keeping everybody safe. Also, I did want to mention on February 28th, we get a shred-a-thon at the Baptist Church parking lot 9120 North 95th, <clears throat> 95th Avenue, and it's a shredded thorn and uh, get rid of all your stuff so identity theft uh, won't come back and bite you because <clears throat> I'll tell you, I had two phone calls. One call from a buddy of mine, lives in Youngtown, and he says, I got an email from you. <clears throat> he says, you did? He says, yeah. He says, I got an email that he was in Croatia and you needed $800 to come home. I said, no, I wasn't in Croatia, so don't send the money. <clears throat> then I got another call from a friend of mine, lives in Peoria, and he says, he got an email from me <clears throat> saying that I had to talk to him right away. It's very important. I says, Peter, I, I don't even know your email number, so how could I email you? So you gotta watch out for these things, and evidently, somebody's got my number. I didn't want to say the last thing is that, you know, as March is the, the election day up in Mesquite, and I think it's important to get out there and vote. Vote for the candidate that you think that's going to do the job for you in Mesquite. And I would hope that everybody get the early ballots, get them in, 
get up there and vote because it's your duty. City Peoria Council is not like the legislature, state legislature, or uh, United States Congress or Senator. We vote on different things. We don't vote what they vote on. So it's important that you get out there and vote and to get two good candidates that I think that will do the job. Uh, God bless each and every one of you, and God bless America. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Hunt. <clears throat> First, I want to say thank you to John Sefton and his staff. Uh, Pioneer Park is indeed a wonderful, uh, wonderful place. And the uh, fishbowl on Saturday, I heard so many comments about it. I do happen to have a couple fisher people in my family, and uh, they do see the comfort, the need to sit all day and um, catch a cold, or I mean a fish. But um, the other thing I wanted to mention was, I've had a lot of people say, I drove down 83rd Avenue, what are those big round things? <laughs> well, it's kind of like, they're kind of like the London Eye. You know, they remind me, you can see them, I, I saw them in the pictures here. Uh, those are wagon wheels, they are public art, and they signify the history of Peoria and Pioneer Park. And uh, kudos to the folks, I was not on council when those were selected, but to the arts committee that selected those, the artists that designed them, and to city council that had the foresight to vote to put those in. I think it's gonna be a great place for family pictures uh, because they're so memorable. They're so, so if you haven't been down there, if you haven't taken your kids or your grandkids down to Pioneer Park to play, you really need to do that. And that's all I have. Thank you, Council Member Finn. Thank you, and thank you for pointing out that I shouldn't be saying Fisher men because it would be politically incorrect. So I am one of those Fisher people. I do enjoy to fish, um, and I did miss that, um, and I do love to fish. I can't even tell you how much I love to fish, but it was for a great cause because we had a great meeting on Saturday, and I want to thank all of the council members for um, taking part of their Saturday to come down and have that great meeting. I thought it was fantastic. Um, not a whole lot of public uh, appearance there, but it was an uh, outstanding meeting, so thank you all for that. Um, I also wanted to um, also thank Public Safety for um, all of their efforts on Sunday as well. I happen to have a family member that was part of that on the Phoenix side. I know what goes into that. It's an incredible operation and it takes a lot of planning and work um, leading up to that. Um, I know that some people were actually in the stadium, but I can assure you they don't actually get to enjoy the game because they're working extremely hard out there and you take it for granted when you're sitting in front of your big screen um, watching the game on you know, what all went into that. So I wanna just throw a shout out to all of the public safety people that were out there on Sunday and, and doing their thing. So thank you. So thank you. Okay, Youth Council Liaison Malay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would again like to just echo the thank, thanks for, of course, all of those who kept us safe over Super Bowl weekend. I actually, our human resource officer at Centennial High School, Officer Fernandez, he explained to me about all the different intricacies that went into making sure that everyone was safe and all the different things they had to keep in mind throughout that whole ordeal, throughout the whole week, and especially over the weekend. And as someone who did partake in a lot of the concerts and whatnot downtown, uh, I can say it was an incredible time that I had there, and just knowing that we had people making sure that everyone was not only taken care of, um, but overall that the city itself was going to be safe in case anything were to happen, which nothing did, thank God. Um, but it was nice to know that there are people there who are going to make sure that everything's going to be all right. So thank you to all of those who kept us safe for the weekend. And it's senior year, the second semester, everything's kind of winding down. Graduation is soon looming. And overall, I'm just ready to uh, finish here and continue my work and overall continue what I can to do for the city of Peoria. So thank you. Thank you. Council Member Toma. Thank you. I also want to echo a uh, good job to John and team for the fishbowl and uh, also to our, to our exceptional public safety department. You guys always do a great job and I know you're a model for the rest of the, uh, the cities around us, so thank you for that. I did want to say that um, this past week I attended the second public hearing for a proposed fries store in the Mesquite District. And that's only notable because, uh, believe it or not, there's only one grocery store, proper grocery store in the entire Mesquite District. Uh, and that is actually in Vistancia. So the rest of us that 
that aren't close to Vistantia end up having to go outside of the district uh, to, to, do our, to do our grocery shopping. Um, we voted on Sprouts today, so that actually will be the second by the time it's open. And uh, Fry's, which is going to be coming on the south um, east corner of Lake Pleasant and Happy Valley, will hopefully be the next. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm happy to take any uh, public comments uh, in my personal notes, I guess, um, if anybody has any thoughts on it. But um, overall, I think it's very positive. So thank you. Councilmember Patana. All right, Vice Mayor Edwards. Nothing, Mayor. Okay, there being no further business then, we are adjourned. Thank you.